Hi, welcome to the session. Today I'm going to talk about Microsoft Graph Communications API. So this is the agenda for today. Uh, I'll give you the background around Communications API. Uh, we'll discuss about the syntax to call the API. We'll also discuss about the use case scenarios for Microsoft Communications API. And I'll walk you through the code and we'll have a cool demo of ReactJS app. So let's get started. So why do we need a communications API? We need a communications API to provide an opportunity to developers to customize or extend the core communication capabilities. We also need this API to introduce a new user interaction features in line of business applications and other services. Uh, considering communications, Type for Business and Microsoft Teams are the most popular communication enterprise software used by most of the organizations. Microsoft Teams, as we all know, is a unified communication and collaboration platform that combines persistent workplace chat, video meetings, audio meetings, uh, file storage. We have a lot of application integrations that can be done in Microsoft Teams. Whereas prior to Microsoft Teams, Skype for Business was the most popular instant messaging app. I would say instant messaging enterprise software, which was either deployed in Skype for Business server, or it was an offering in Office 365 Skype for Business Online. So Skype for Business provided multiple options for developers for customizing the experience. Uh, to name the few, it, it provided Skype for Business app SDK. Uh, it provided Microsoft Unified Communications Web API. There were multiple link server SDKs, link server, the former name of Skype for Business, and so on and so forth. So I'll, I'll discuss a couple of them. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about the Skype for Business SDK. So Skype for Business SDK, uh, it, it, provide, it integrated the uh, messaging, audio, video experiences into mobile and tablet applications. It also helped uh, in external consumer, specifically the Android apps, the iOS apps. Uh, so those, those apps would interact with the Skype for Business features using the uh, Skype for Business app SDK. There was uh, another option uh, called Microsoft Unified Communications Web API. So this web API, so this web API, it, it was a RESTful API that can act on as a uh, Skype for Business user uh, to send instant messages and uh, show the presence capabilities. Uh, you must have seen the uh, presence of the user in SharePoint or in Remedy. Uh, so those kind of remedy application. So this web API provided an opportunity to show the present status in, in similar kind of applications in, um, in intranet applications. It also helped to embed the instant messaging experience in your enterprise applications. Uh, it, it helped in web chat, like proactive chatting with your uh, sales team or e-commerce site support team and so on and so forth. But these applications or uh, these options which were available, these options were, they had the limited opportunity for customization and to extend the capabilities. Also, these, applies, these options were developed in the legacy frameworks which are very complex to integrate with the newer versions of the applications. Microsoft has announced 
the retirement of sky for business now so we need to look for an a newer option and it it already has announced that there will be richer set of experiences offered in microsoft teams considering all this microsoft has introduced microsoft graph communications api as we all know microsoft graph is the endpoint that rules all it is the gateway to data as, as you can see it in the diagram here uh it is the date it is the gateway to the data and intelligence in microsoft 365 it provides a unified programmability model that you can use to access the tremendous amount of data in from office 365 enterprise mobility security and so on so forth so as i said this is an endpoint which rules all and microsoft communication api is is part of this microsoft graph api okay so uh, uh this microsoft graph communications api it has added a new dimension to how your organization will interact with other users and to develop the custom or customization of the communication platform uh we will talk about the syntax and then we'll get into the demo and and we'll also see the use case scenarios so first uh, we'll talk about the syntax so here you can see uh the syntax is uh, th this is the typical uh graph call you can make uh with beta uh, currently the uh this endpoint is in beta but that you can use with communications this is the endpoint and then you can uh, here is the um, operation what you need to do to get presence by user so this is syntax okay so here are the ids and you can send the set of ids similar to this way and you can get the presence of the user presence okay so this is the way how you can call the communication cpi now there are two ways i'll i'll show you two ways how you can see the results of this communication api um uh, as i i have mentioned this in my earlier sessions as well that uh, graph explorer is a great tool to see the uh, to see the calls to the api uh, how the data is rendered and fetched and it gives you a lot of opportunity to understand and see the output of the api call okay so let me make this api call using graph explorer so this is me dot presence it is giving my presence and if i run this query it it shows that i am in do not disturb mode because my if you see in my my presence it is currently do not disturb okay let me change that and uh, we'll see if it changes okay so i have changed my presence from do not disturb to available okay and i run the query and it shows that i am available so this is how you can make calls with graph explorer and you can see the instantly see the results of the api calls but for intermediate and advanced developers i always recommend to use postman over graph there are a couple of reasons for that so graph explorer does not use your app registration meaning different permissions are used so the permissions what are used here are different from your app registration which are which you have registered in your azure ad okay so it's common to run into issues when you move from graph graph explorer to your code uh so when you write the same apis and make a call you might run into issues where permission related issues uh, or scopes are not allowed permission related issues and uh, so on so forth so postman what it does is let, let us take an view of that so postman what it does is you can provide your app registration and you can provide the information client secret client token and all those things so once you provide that information it really helps to 
understand that what permissions are missing so if you make a call using postman it, it helps and it it helps you to resolve the issues faster and you it is as your code is executing and making the calls okay so let me get the access token once okay, once i get the access token i'll run the same query and see uh, earlier i was in do not disturb and let's execute it and see that i'm available okay so this is how you can make calls to this communication api and this is uh, this is under the umbrella of the microsoft graph so you can make different calls uh, let me show you another example of this so if you have to make a call uh, so i want to know the present status of this users okay so this user the, so the the way it goes is for users i want to know the presence and this is how you can make a call and i get the name of this users so you might notice here that uh, if you want to make a call you would need an id and the response of this is you you get the presence of the user but you get the id okay so this is important to note and currently the display name of the user is not available in the graph call in this calls okay let me get back to my presentation and we will talk about the use case scenarios of microsoft communication api so as i said a microsoft graph communication api adds a new dimension to how uh, your organization can interact with other users so this this api will help you to embed uh, instant messaging experience in your line of business applications so whatever custom applications you have you can have uh, using this api you can introduce the same instant messaging features what you have in the uh, microsoft teams okay you can also use the communication api to build your application boards okay so the application boards that will act like participants in the call they can create and retrieve meetings on behalf of user and they can check the presence activity of the user okay um, there, there are multiple scenarios uh, to know the presence information of the users like uh, you have you want to contact some uh, specific users or specific support team and you want to know the presence information before you know the call is initiated to that so that uh, the call can be initiated if the person is available and you can talk and uh, so on so forth take it forward so to avoid to use those scenarios this this api is really helpful you can also use this api to create and receive calls and create and re receive uh, the meeting coordinates and check the user presence i already talked about the user presence but you can also create the uh, create and retrieve meetings and if the user is not available during that time what is the available time of that user so you you can get all those information using the api calls uh, and you can also get the call records of the users all the users based on your access and permissions those those things are possible not only that uh, this graph api also uses a webhook mechanism so if there is any change uh, so this webhook mechanism it it delivers the change notification to clients so if there is any change that change is posted back in this uh, apis so so these are the different use case scenarios uh, what where you can use the communication api so let us move on to the demo okay so i'll i'll show you a demo of the application how this how you can uh, leverage this communications api to get the uh, present status of the user so what i have done here is uh, let me show you the code first uh, i'll walk you through the code and i'll i'll also show you the demo of the application so what i have done here is i am i have created a component and uh, there is an helper class graph sdk helper where i am making the calls to this i have used hello.js to make this api calls uh, i i get the uh, details of the present status of the ids of the users and taking those ids 
what I do is make a call. And once I get the status of those users, I have created a component which, so this is the component. And here I map those at the data which I have got back. So this ID status, and as, as I said, the API returns only the ID and the status. So I am using display name uh, from my end uh, to retrieve the display name using the ID and the display name is shown. Okay, so let, let us see this in action. Okay, so this is the uh, component, uh, the present status of the user and I will have the, the this is my user okay uh, let me get another user okay so this is my user uh the name of the user is ross keller inspired by friends so i have uh, this this different status of the users and i will show you how i can get those users okay so i have ross keller and i'll fetch the present status of that user Okay, so be right back. Currently, the status is be right back. I'll, I'll change it to available and run this, and I, I get the status. So the status is updated to available. I can again change it and show you that I can get the presence of the user. So, what this application, this React application, this is a locally hosted application. What it is doing is using this uh, graph API calls, using this get presence of the user ID, the user which I have selected in my, in the people picker here, whatever users are there in the people picker, it, with that people picker user, it is making a call and then getting the live status of that user. Okay, let me change the status once again. Let me make him away. Okay, and you can see now. Okay, so okay, fine. I can also make that user uh, uh, sign out, and I can get the status of that user as offline. Okay, this is just an example which shows how you can use a communication API. There are different endpoints, different uh, you know, you know uh, different functions available which which you you can make like get get user that get call records get availability get the so i've talked about multiple use case scenarios about uh, this communications api right to summarize i can say that the microsoft graph communications api it is a very powerful uh, api which is going to give you an opportunity to customize your uh, user experience and communication capabilities what you have within your organization and there are a lot of a line of business applications and services which can be integrated into this and can be used the microsoft communication Gra graph api can be used there uh, to leverage the um like not the communications feature which are available underlying Thank you so much for joining this session. If you have any queries or comments, just make sure that uh, you post them and I'll make sure to reply to those. Uh, thank you again for joining.